from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau, Johnny. Well, long time, Pat. What's on your mind? At the moment, 120000 bucks. Hey, you're really thinking big these days. No, correction. Worrying big. Well, I guess if I had 120,000 clams, I'd worry too. Look, if we had it, I wouldn't be worrying. So who does have it? Thomas Chase. Come again? A partner in the New York Investment Syndicate, Everson and Chase. Real dignified outfit up till now. Chase embezzled the money? We think so. So what do you want with me? I'm no expert in forcing confessions. Johnny, you can't make a guy confess if you can't find him. Oh? Chase has jumped his bail. He's disappeared. I'll be right over. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut... Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Phantom Chase matter. Expense account item one, a dollar even, taxi, from my apartment to the offices of Universal Adjustment, where Pat McCracken was waiting for me, with a worried look and a handful of papers. Well, how can you figure it, Johnny? An outfit like Everson and Chase goes along for years without a blemish on the record, and then Bluey, one of them, turns sour. Well, that's what makes horse races, I guess. Yeah, that's also what gives bonding companies headaches. Yeah. What's the background, Pat? No, oh, it's all in here. Everson and Chase, investment brokers. Real high-class clientele. Partnership? Oh, yeah. George Everson, senior partner. Uh, 42 years old. Pillar of society. Married? No, widower. Wife died three, four years ago. This Thomas Chase is the junior partner, then? Yeah. He's 38. He's a big fellow, clean cut. All conference football player in college. You know, that sort of thing. Everything in his favor. Looks, personality, intelligence, ability. Why, Johnny, huh? Why a guy like that? Oh, you're asking the wrong fella. I've seen enough ambassadors, though, to know they come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. What turns a man like that sour, anyway? Well, you know the stock reasons as well as I do, Pat. Gambling debts, a woman... Incidentally, is Chase married? Now, that's another thing I don't get. What do you mean? I know one of the stock reasons for embezzling is another woman. If that was Chase's motive, he's nuttier than a fruitcake. Why anyone who had a wife like Lola Chase would even look at another woman is beyond me. Like that, huh? Like that. Impresses me as a real, real fine woman. And has got the looks to go with it. Well, you'll be talking to her. You'll see for yourself. Always a pleasure, Pat. Now, about the money that's missing, $120,000, you see. Yeah, more or less. Currency, checks, negotiable securities. Well, look, a deal like that didn't just take place overnight. It must have been going on for a long time. No doubt of it. How did Chase manage it? Well, Everson can fill you in on that better than I could. The senior partner. Yeah. Now, he's still not willing to go along with us that Chase is guilty. I think he's pretty concerned about the company name, which is understandable enough. Well, maybe but... he's got something. Yeah. Well, you better save yourself some time, Johnny. Meaning? <laughs> Meaning you just answer me one question. All right, what is it? Would an innocent man jump bail? Expense item two, $16.20, transportation and incidentals to New York to the office of Everson and Chase. George Everson was just as Pat McCracken had described him. Early 40s, a little gray at the temples, a healthy tan, the real solid citizen type. Handsome and right now unhappy. Ah. Uh... I still can't believe it, Mr. Dollar. Tom Chase, of all people. Mm. Boy, he was like a younger brother. I nursed him through the best graduate business school in the East. I took him in with me. Yeah, how long ago did he become a partner in the firm, Mr. Everson? Four, five years. Yeah, five years next month it would be. And Lola. Poor Lola. His wife? What? If I ever saw an ideal marriage, that was it. As far as I could see, she'd... Well, she's all that a man could want. Maybe not for Tom Chase. Well, maybe not, but I certainly don't understand it. Tell me, how was Chase able to get away with this deal? The embezzlement? Oh. Well, to begin with, Mr. Dollar, our firm has always maintained a very fluid relationship with its clients. How frequently we're buying or selling for them, or both, very rapidly. In a situation like that, the client places a great deal of confidence and trust in us. And we've always had the utmost of both from them. Well, at least we did have. I see. Well, anyway... 
In a situation like ours, it is possible for a clever man to juggle figures. And that's what Tom Chase did? Huh? Yes, I'm afraid so. You see, more and more lately, he'd taken over the personal management of some of our best accounts. Oh, sort of taking them under the wing, huh? I encouraged him to. But if I'd realized I was only putting temptation in Tom's way, I'd... Well, how did you find out what he'd been up to, Mr. Everson? Well, Tom had formed a kind of pattern in his accounts. He specialized in handling those clients of ours who were primarily interested in growth investments. Uh, growth? Long range. You know, buy and hold it for quite a while. Oh, yeah, I see. But one of those clients suddenly decided to liquidate his holdings on short notice. The account turned up short, then? Quite short. So, of course, I immediately ordered a full-scale audit. The results of that brought the district attorney's office into it. The rest, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I must say that on paper, he'd done a very convincing job. You see, now, here are the files on all his accounts. <clears throat> Pardon me. He'd recorded each transaction carefully and correctly and had written up memos on all of them. Mm -hmm. These memos, they in his handwriting? Yes, they are. May I take one of them with me? Yeah, certainly. There you are. Thanks. Mr. Emerson, as I understand it, Tom Chase wouldn't talk after his arrest. No. And that was the most frustrating part of it. If he'd have given us some kind of explanation, anything. But he refused to make a statement of any kind. I see. I arranged for his bail, of course, and tried to do what I could, but... But he jumped bail and disappeared. Yes, I'm afraid so. This was four days ago, I understand. Yes. All right, one more thing, Mr. Everson. Had he acted at all differently lately? Well, I, I hadn't noticed anything, but apparently his wife, Lola, had. Oh, yeah, I had dinner with them a week or so before, well, before this thing happened. Lola got me off to one side for a moment and asked me if I'd noticed any change in Tom lately. Change? Yeah, she said that he'd seemed rather moody and preoccupied. Well, that made me realize that he had seemed a trifle tense around the office. But apparently, he'd told her he'd been working extra hard. Yeah, I suppose that should have been a danger sign to me, but... Uh, well, I, I was afraid I'd... So I just passed it off. I kidded her out of it. Yeah, well, thanks for the information, Mr. Everson. It's little enough, I'm afraid. Where do you start looking at a case like this? <laughs> well, that's a good question. First, I think I'm going to have a talk with Mrs. Chase, find out all I can about her husband's habits, likes and dislikes, so on. Sometimes you pick up a lead that way. Well, you'll probably run him down sooner or later. I understand you have quite a reputation at that sort of thing. Um, I wonder if you'd do me a favor, Mr. Dollar. Sure. As I say, you'll probably find him, and as for the money, well, I guess whatever part of it we recover, we should be grateful for. Well, that's about the size of it, I guess. But frankly, I'd rather not see Tom Chase again, unless it can't be avoided. Yeah, I understand. But there is one question I guess I'll always wonder about. Maybe you can find the answer for me. What is it? Why did he do it? Why? <laughs> Expense account item 3, 12 50, cocktails and dinner for Lola Chase and myself. I figured she might relax a little more that way, and believe me, taking Lola Chase to dinner was no chore. She was everything Pat McCracken and George Everson had said she was. Tom Chase must have had some pretty powerful reasons to walk out on her. Well, Lola and I made general conversation throughout dinner. She was poised, but pretty subdued. After we finished eating, I steered the conversation around to her husband. I don't know that there's anything I can tell you that I haven't already told the district attorney's office, Mr. Dollar. But whatever information I can furnish... Well, what I mainly want to know is... Well, what sort of person was your husband? Tom? Yeah. I guess I'm the wrong one to be answering that, Mr. Dollar. Hmm? I thought I knew Tom better than anyone in the world. But as it turned out, I didn't know him at all. Funny how you can live with someone for years and never... Yeah. So when you ask me what sort of person he was, I guess I have to say I really don't know. Well, how about his hobbies, likes and dislikes, uh, you know, that sort of thing? Well, he liked to play golf. Uh -huh. He did some sailing. And he had quite a collection of records and an elaborate hi-fi set. Oh, what kind of records? Jazz, mostly. He used to play them by the hour. I must say, he turned them up a little too loudly for me. <laughs> but then I understand that women's ears weren't built for hi-fi or something like that. Yeah, tell me, Mrs. Chase, did you notice uh, much change in his behavior recently? Yes, I, I did. And it upset me. What sort of change? 
well, for one thing, he became rather moody. I guess you'd call it. He seemed to have something on his mind all the time. Several times he stayed out late at night, said he was working. I see. And then there was the thing about our vacation. What was that? Well, we'd planned a little trip. But at the last moment, he told me he couldn't go. He insisted I make the trip without him. I didn't want to, but he insisted. So I finally went, alone. It was when I got back that I found out he'd been arrested. Where did you go on this trip? Martha's Vineyard. Uh -huh. Well, thanks very much for the information, Mrs. Chase. Thank you, Mr. Dollar. You've been very kind. When and if you find Tom, well... Yes? Well, I guess I'm just foolish enough to think he... he still might be innocent. I took Mrs. Chase to her apartment and then went back to my hotel. The big question was where to start. What did I really know about Tom Chase? I had a picture of him and a specimen of his handwriting. I knew his hobbies. But what did it all add up to? Oh, Mr. Riverson. Yes, I'm sorry to barge in on you at this hour, Mr. Dollar. No, not at all. Come in, come in. Sir, thanks. Mr. Dollar, you probably think I'm crazy, and I know it's a very slim chance, but it is a chance. What are you talking about? Take a look at this newspaper. Right here. Huh? A feature article on jazz in New Orleans. This picture taken in a bar down there. The old guy with the trumpet? No, 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 in the background, the people sitting at the bar. Look at this man right here. Oh. His face is half turned away, and it looks like he hasn't shaved for a while. Mr. Dollar, that's Tom Chase. You sure? You can't see much of his face. I know, I know. But when you've been around a man for several years, you notice little things about him, little mannerisms. Like what? Well, look, look at the way he's got his head sort of cocked to one side. Now, that's just the way Tom always did when he was listening to something. And look at his hand resting on the bar like one finger was pointing at something. Wow. Now, that's the way Tom held his hand. And look, he's got one leg sort of drawn up. That is exactly the way Tom used to sit at a bar. Oh, but Mr. Everson, any number of men... And that picture isn't too clear. I know. Maybe it's just a crazy, wild idea. But Mr. Mr. Dollar, I'll bet on it that that man is Tom Chase. Crazy, wild idea? Maybe, maybe not. But it took less than a second to mentally flip a coin and it came up New Orleans. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this story. Yeah, on to New Orleans, where the trail proves to be pretty cold, but warms up fast. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Mm -hmm.